So I want to talk about uh, worshipping deities and setting up an altar. I'm not going to go in so much into the um, practical procedures of worshipping the deities this time. It comes a little later on. But just some basic principles, basic ideas. Uh, what, why, we, why we need an altar at home? And what are deities? What's the point of worshipping deities? There's two conceptions of the absolute truth. There's the personal conception, there's the impersonal conception. So the impersonal conception is that Krishna's got no form, no qualities, no pastimes, uh, no personality. And the personal conception is that he has form, transcendental form, qualities, pastimes, everything. So um, when Srila Prabhupada came to the West, he was especially concerned that Westerners have a very, very deep uh, impersonal conception. Because nobody taught us for so many years. Even in India, maybe the majority of people, there are many people who worship Krishna, but if you scratch a, his, a Krishna worshipper, oftentimes you'll find that they want liberation. In other words, the conception is basically impersonal. So, worshipping the deity is a very, very important way of uh, establishing faith in Krishna's personal form, establishing a personal relationship with Krishna. So worshipping in the temple and worshipping at home is a very important part of devotional service. How we do it depends on our means, how much time we have, uh, like that. Mm. Srila Prabhupada emphasized the importance that uh, householders should have deities. Srila Gurudev, on the other hand, he's kind of not emphasized it so much. On the whole, he prefers that devotees have pictures, worship pictures on the altar, and save the time for Harinam. Why? Partly because oftentimes devotees start worshipping deities, and then they become tired, and they give it up, and this is an offense, is one thing. Another thing, it takes up time. Deity worship takes up time. And especially for householders, or devotees who are working, there's not that much time in the day. So these are some considerations. Another thing is, he said, anyone can steal your deity, but nobody can steal your Hari now. And actually, we've, we've had experience how uh, devotees have had their deities stolen, but nobody can steal your Hari now. So these are some reasons why we should, why we should engage in deity worship. And, and then what will be the form of the altar at home especially. At home generally it will be quite simple. Some, some devotees have gorgeous altars, like uh, Madden Mohan in Wales, for example. Really elaborate, beautiful. And, mm, but a simple, a simple one is fine. So what is the form of the altar? There will be the deities, and I'll discuss in a minute which deities. And then the or there will be pictures. Generally speaking, it's, it's advisable to have pictures of deities. So in, uh, in our mats, in Srila Narayan Maharaj, Srila Gurudev's mats, we're worshipping uh, Satchinanda Gaurahari and Radha Krishna together. Satchinanda Gaurahari, Radha Krishna. So it's, it's advisable and convenient to have a picture, like for example the deities in Madhra, the deities in Govardhan, the deities in Delhi, some beautiful deities, deities in Vrindavan, like this, have a picture on the, on the altar and worship them, and actually that's like worshipping that deity. Then also we have the <coughs> Guru Parampara, starting with Gurudev, Prabhupada, uh, maybe Srila uh, Vaman Maharaj, if, if that mood is there, that connection is there. Then Srila Param Gurudev, Srila Bhaktisthan Sarasati Thakur, and Srila Gokishoda Spamiji Maharaj, Taku Bhaktivinoda, and Srila Jagannath Spamiji Maharaj. So why do we have the Guru Parampara? Because we can't worship Krishna directly. We're worshipping through Gurudev, or through Prabhupada. And Srila Gurudev is the, even for those who are disciples, Diksha disciples of Srila Prabhupada, 
but still there's some special connection with Gurudev because Srila Gurudev is explaining how we do uh, archan, how we worship the deity in a special way. In a way that I personally, anyway, didn't, I didn't receive that instruction when Prabhupada was here. So in any case, there's a special connection with Srila Gurudev. So, Srila Gurudev has to be there, but then Srila Gurudev doesn't want to be there without his Guru Maharaj. And Srila Param Gurudev doesn't want to be there without Srila Bhaktisthan Sarasthi Thakur. So it's, it's passing it up, passing the relation up. Uh, and then six Goswamis, and also Shishi Gornikai, or Panchatattva, also they can be there. How are they seeing themselves? Are they seeing themselves as a Supreme Personality Godhead? No, they're not. They see themselves as devotees of the Lord. This is their mood. So for example, Gornikai, we don't put peacock feathers, because that would be disturbing their mood. So they can be, they will be happy below the main deities, Radha and Krishna. Sachinanda and Gaurahari, that's a different thing. Then he's, he's Radha and Krishna, he's not different from Radha and Krishna. So the question arises, what are deities? Why do we worship deities? We're worshipping deities uh, because they will give us mercy. What mercy do we want? We want the mercy to engage in their service. We want to be able to, in, we want to, be able to serve them. And deity worship means that we can offer uh, puja, incense, lamps, flowers, like that. Also we offer food. Any food that's consumed should always be offered. We don't eat boga. Boga means that which is to be enjoyed. It's to be enjoyed by Krishna. So we offer to Krishna, and then after that we respect Prashada. So our deities, finally, who, we're following Srila Gurudev's mood. So who, who are Srila Gurudev's deities? Radha and Krishna. Uh, our worship of deities are Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan engaged in their beautiful pastimes with their associates, with their friends, with cowherd boys also, but especially with, with sakis, gopis. So that Vrindavan mode. Uh, and we want to worship, we want to serve them, we want to worship them, so therefore we have, the, uh, have them on the altar, and this way we build up a, a mood of serving them. Mm. Then question arises, so in that case, why did Srila Gurudev, why did Srila Prabhupada give uh, Gornitai? So, the deities that we're worshipping, there's a specific mood of worship. And at the end of the day, we want to worship those deities with whom we want to live eternally. So, what's our final eternal destination? Vrindavan, Goloka Vrindavan. Also, with uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Navadvip Mayapur, also. But, uh, especially Radha and Krishna Vrindavan, so we're worshipping Radha and Krishna. Now, Srila Prabhupada explained that, mm, and he said, unless one's very fortunate, he shouldn't be induced to worship Radha and Krishna directly. He said, a neophyte devotee, student who is not sufficiently educated or enlightened should not indulge in the worship of Sri Sri Radha Krishna or the chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. Even if he does so, he can't get the desired result. One should therefore chant the names of Gornitai and worship them without false prestige. So, Srila Prabhupada is here explaining why he introduced the worship of Gornitai. Because it's very, very beneficial for... When Prabhupada came to the West, his disciples were in a primitive state. I mean, he was literally dragging them off the streets, dragging them out of the gutters. And even when they were coming to live in the temple, uh, they, they weren't educated, they weren't cultured, spiritually cultured. So, first of all, he gave us Gorni Thai, or... Uh, he gave us Gorni Thai, or Panchitattva, because they'll be so merciful, and they'll give us their service, and they'll give us the service of Radha and Krishna. For this reason, uh, he gave us Gornitai. So, he says, it's essential that one take to the worship of Guru Goranga and ask their favor. For thus, despite all his disqualifications, one will very soon become qualified to worship the Radha Krishna Vigraha. So, does that mean we should stop worshipping Radha Krishna and serve Gornitai? No. 
Because Srila Gurudev, he's engaging us in the worship of Radhan Krishna, and he's initiated us into the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. We've made promises that we'll uh, follow a particular um, style of devotional service, we'll avoid sinful activities. So, therefore, we're worshipping Radhan Krishna. But, yeah, so those are our main deities. In Gauriyama, yes, we're worshipping Radha, Krishna, and Sachinanda Gaurahari. Sachinanda Gaurahari is none different from Radha and Krishna. Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha Krishna Nahiyanya. He's Krishna, but he's come in the mood of Srimati Radharani to taste the mood of Srimati Radharani. So therefore, he's none different from Satsinanda Gorahari, he's none different from Radha and Krishna. And it's through him, actually, that we get our knowledge and our realization of Radha and Krishna. So it's very important that he's on the altar. Uh, then, other deities. Sometimes devotees worshipping Lord Chaitanya, or the worshipping Gornitai, as yeah, recommended by Srila Prabhupada. Mm. One, one devotee... <coughs> had very, very beautiful Gornitai deities, Nim deities, when he came to Srila Gurudev. So they'd been installed by his Guru Maharaj, Srila Gorgavinda Maharaj. And he asked Srila Gurudev that if he should continue with his worship. Well, Gurudev said, yeah. But don't be surprised if Nityananda Prabhu goes off to herd the cows one day. Means that Gornitai, they're in the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his younger brother of Nityananda Prabhu. <coughs> spiritual brother. Nityananda Prabhu is in what mood? He's in the mood of cowherd boy. He's Baladev. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is with Nityananda Prabhu, they're in that mood. And, for example, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was dancing in Ratiyatra, first Ratiyatra, he became so absorbed in the mood of Srimati Radharani that he took on the form, actually. He manifested the form of Srimati Radharani. And at that time, Nityananda Prabhu, he went somewhere else. He couldn't be there. Because Nityananda Prabhu is Baladev. Baladev is the older brother of Krishna. So he can't be with the consort of his younger brother. Baladev can't be with the consort of his younger brother. These are some niceties of like transcendental mood. So long and the short of it is that uh, Gornitai, they're in the mood of devotees of the Lord. And especially Nityananda Prabhu, he's in the mood of a, a cowherd boy. So they'll give us their mercy so much. By their mercy, we're engaged in this Krishna consciousness movement. By their mercy, we're engaged in chanting the holy name. They spread the chanting of the holy name everywhere. But having said that, although we want to be with Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, but our deity is Radha and Krishna. We want, that's the mood that we want. That particular Vrindavan mood. Jagannath Dev. Many devotees worshipping Jagannath. Jagannath is very, very merciful. For example, if you go to the Puri temple, Jagannath Puri, although as Westerners we can't go into the temple, but there's Patitapavan Jagannath. He's just standing just inside the gate. You can actually see him from outside. Who's Patitapavan Jagannath? There was one, uh, one devotee of Lord Jagannath. He was non-Hindu. He wasn't allowed to go into the temple. So he decided he was just going to sit and fast outside. And one day the Pujari went into the temple. Oh, Jagannath's not there. So they went to look and they found Jagannath was standing just inside the gate giving his darshan to this devotee. The devotee was ecstatically mm, having darshan. So Jagannath is so merciful and he comes out on uh, Ratiatra, on the Ratiatra day. And my Guru Maharaj, when he was a little boy he had Ratiatra in uh, Calcutta. And then uh, he had his disciples having Ratiatra, so many beautiful processions. So Jagannath is very merciful, but who is he? Who is Jagannath? He's Krishna, he's Dwarka Krishna, being dragged by the gopis back to Vrindavan. Not exactly the same mood. Jagannath doesn't have a peacock feather, doesn't have a flute. So it's not exactly the same mood. So uh, Nishingadev also. Nishingadev is he's a, a Vaikuntha deity. Gurudev said if Nishingadev appeared in, in Brindavan, all the gopis would run away. <laughs> so Gurudev, he's very much in the mood of being one pointed, that just we just worship one deity, means Radhan Krishna, Sachinanda Gaurahari. 
so that we can fix on that mood in our service, and we serve, we concentrate on serving them in that mood. So that's like that's the beginning of uh, some considerations when we're worshiping the deities at home, Hare Krishna. Mm-hmm.